I would like at this point with lots of pride to invite up my relative, the honorable, great man, Dr. Gerald McMaster. So I just wanted to say thanks uh, for the opportunity to come here and say a few words. You know, I'm very proud of my cousin Clint, the chief, who's carrying on the tradition of uh, George Whitney and the family before that. So close to 20 years ago, Winston mentioned that I worked in Washington, D.C. for the National Museum of the American Indian, which is uh, with the Smithsonian Institution. I was the deputy assistant director for cultural resources in charge of the collections. We had a collection of about a million objects from different parts of North and South America. And uh, part of my uh, responsibilities was to oversee a department called repatriation. And repatriation uh, in those days for us was, uh, our main priority was to get human remains because a lot of museums had our ancestors' remains. So we had to find ways to get them back to communities so they can reinter them back into the ground. We were in charge of uh, the return of uh, sacred uh, sensitive objects and also objects of cultural patrimony, which I think this medal is that we're looking at today. And they represent not only our history, but our history of our relationships, but it also represents our diplomacy. And I think for us, it is cultural patrimony. It is coming back home again. I would like to invite this wonderful man here, Chief Clint Watney, to come up and make some remarks about this. Thank you, Winston. Uh, well, I guess on the schedule here, um, opening remarks and welcoming everybody here today to Red Pheasant uh, Treaty 6 territory for many of you who come from a long ways uh, outside of our territory. It's customary for, for us to, to welcome you all into our, our homelands here and uh, hope that you uh, are enjoying yourselves. And uh, today is a very great day for us here in Red Pheasant. We've worked very hard, very diligently for the for the past few years uh, in my leadership here to accomplish a lot of things. I'm, I'm happy to say that we, we, we have been, you know, and uh, uh, it just keeps getting better for us. I, I think I think our future is, is looking very good uh, for, for the accomplishments that we have been making. And of course, the ceremony today is another accomplishment that uh, our leadership has uh, accomplished. Bringing home this treaty medal, you know, a couple of leaders in the past have tried, have been unsuccessful for one reason or another. I think at one time the museum was not really able to do that in the beginning. Now we just happen to be in, in, in a good time and in the right time for us in leadership now to bring this treaty medal home. We see this treaty medal as a, a sim symbolically signifies what those negotiations, negotiations were all about. Keeping this agreement strong, an agreement that would live forever. We are delighted to be with you here today on behalf of the Manitoba Museum and it is an honor and privilege to repatriate your treaty medal back to your community. So without further ado, I'd like to pass the medal. This medal has been on a very long journey to come back home and for those few years before signing in 1876, there was a lot of prayers done. There was a lot of discussions done. And like it's being done here, this started several days ago. That's how our ancestors started everything, and that's how it's being done here. You can never forget about those who walked before us because they were the wise ones. We all think we're smart nowadays. We're, they were the wise ones. They thought about what we're going to be doing today. But as this journey with this medal, when you sit back and think about it, it has a spirit and it wanted to be free. As our chief had said, the treaty medal was symbolic of the relationship between First Nations and non-First Nations. Our people, through starvation, our buffalo were gone, had very little choice in going to the table. However, the spirit and intent of what our forefathers had negotiated there, the schoolhouse in Treaty 4, Treaty Right to Education, the medicine chest, Treaty Right to Health, and so on. 
usually you drive around nowadays. We take the opportunity of just driving on these lands and we move very quickly. But the opportunity of actually walking on these lands for an extended period of time over 23 days, you can feel the spirits of our ancestors. You can stop at the trees where they likely stopped as they walked from Red Pheasant or Mosquito all the way to Battleford on their way to the stores, on their way to meet with others. And whether it was 150 years ago or a thousand years ago, those trails are the exact same. That is history and that is the history of this land. When I think about Red Pheasant, Chief Red Pheasant, he had a vision and he had a dream for his people. It was about building his people up for the future. It was about making sure that they would have something that would feed their children. It was about education, it was about health, it was about looking out for each and every one of us. And it was a long-term vision. And that was what is symbolized in this medal. This medal symbolizes the vision of each and every one of us. It is our spirit of our ancestors from thousands of years ago until this point from the youngest unborn child who is here on these powwow grounds right now. When I look at the medal, I don't see a setting sun. I see the rising sun. And I see a rising sun that will shine a light, a light of freedom, a light of human rights, it will lighten those places of our souls which have been dark for far too long. And that is what is in that medal. It will light the hearts of our people and it will light the hearts of Canadians. And so make sure that that medal, that spirit, you can feel it. Make sure that you pray to that medal and think about that spirit within that medal. And no matter if you are Indigenous or non-Indigenous, we are all in this together. We all live here together now. Um. Our roles as Treaty Commissioners today are very different than those, those agents of the past. And there is a shameful history that built Canada, um, but we can't go forward repeating that history. And it's up to the governments of today and up to the people of today to make sure that this can happen. And uh, I know Treaty Commissioners, they, they didn't have emotions probably back then, but and I was saying to Wanda, commissioners don't cry, I hope they don't cry. And she said, nope, the ones now will do. <laughs> you could feel the energy from that treaty medal and I apologize for my emotions, but this is a historic event. And I'm so glad that we are able to be here together. And uh, from my people in Kizikus and from the treaty commission, I'd like to say miigwech, thank you very much for all the dignitaries here, for the people of Manitoba and the museum, and for those people who, who saw this medal come back here all along the way, from that man in England to today, to the chief and council, to the people of Manitoba. Um, I'd like to say thank you. And this is truly indeed an absolutely historic event. Congratulations. Chief Whitney and the people of Red Pheasant, you got your heart back. Well, today the treaty and the return and the repatriation of the treaty medal has become a big part of your treaty story here at Red Pheasant, and, and I think it's so wonderful that you do that. And so we hope we hear that more and people do the research, take the time to understand what their treaty story is because we all have a treaty story, regardless of who you are and where you're from. We owe a lot of where we are today to the treaties and that relationship and what those promises that were made at that time of, of treaty. And so I want to thank you very much for, for spending some time with you today. Shimi Thank you very much, Treaty Commissioners. We are at the end of the program, but we are going to ask uh, Elder Eldon Bear to say a prayer before we leave.
GCS. Welcome, Chief and Council. Visiting Chief Council Dignitaries, welcome. Representing the provinces of Canada. 